All right, good afternoon. How are we feeling? A little pre-lunch time. I'm going to be a little bit more in the entertainment, um, but I'm actually here to share what I hope is actually a very familiar story, but about a place in an area of the world which might be just beyond the periphery of where all of us are really focused in working. So I invite you to imagine, what would it be like if you had to cross a river like this one every single day just to get to your job? Or what if you had to send your daughter to school over a bridge looking like this? I'd invite you to share on this 10 minute journey with me about how each and every one of you in this room can make it possible for other parents, mothers and fathers around the world not to have to ask that same question about how their daughter is going to be able to safely reach school or have to make the really difficult decision not to go. Because the reality is, the World Bank estimates that there's over one billion people that do not have year-round safe access to the basic goods and services that you and I rely on, whether that be health, education, markets. That's one in seven people that literally have the unpredictability of unknowing if they can actually get to the places where a lot of us just assume are down the road. And so what I'm really excited about, click, thank you, is that there's a simple solution. In the very rural last mile, simple footbridges that serve pedestrians, livestock, motorcycles, carts, are very cost-effective rural transportation investments that are affordable, they apply to that rural last mile, and they are catalytic for farmers and school, ch school children alike to be able to change their livelihoods, to be able to go from a place of uncertainty to a place of knowing that they can go to the places they need to go. I'm Avery Bang. Um, I'm the president and CEO of Bridges to Prosperity. And we're laser focused on this last mile transportation infrastructure development. We've worked in over 20 countries. Uh, we focus strictly in that last mile. And we have now connected over 1 million people in the walking world to places like school and healthcare. And I think what's really interesting is that when you start to focus on doing transportation investments, a lot of us in this room are obviously thinking in really large numbers uh, in terms of cost, in terms of project finance, in terms of people. But I think there's an opportunity to also be thinking about how we can aggregate and take a portfolio of small projects and put them together in such a way that they can f be financed and actually serve the people at the very bottom of the pyramid that are most isolated and most need of all of our services. But as they say, a video is worth many words. That's my 30 second how do you build a bridge video. <laughs> Actually it doesn't take that long, but it's a little bit longer than 30 seconds. So um, just wanted to share with you guys that I think it's not about bridges. Like many of you that are working in transportation uh, infrastructure, I don't believe that we're really, really excited about the number of kilometers of road that we install or the number of kilometers of road that we finance. But we're interested in how that actually changes the economic landscape for our countries and for our people. I think footbridges are largely the same. I just happen to care deeply about people that might be beyond that last mile, maybe at the very, very upstream bits of what the rest of us really rely on. And I think what's interesting about footbridges in particular is that 
they're not only a low cost inv investment, but they're catalytic for the people living at the very end of, of where we're looking. So there's a body of evidence that demonstrates that not only uh, are we interested in this in kind of an, like feels good sense, but when you have knowledge of safe access, we have increase in women's literacy, we have over twice the school attendance, and we're seeing having in truancy, which makes quite a bit of sense. If you know you can get to school, you're probably more likely to go, more likely to graduate. Likewise in healthcare, once you are able to actually safely access market or um, healthcare clinics, community health workers in these last mile communities are also able to get in. So when we have year-round safe access, you can imagine that that influences vaccination rates, that in influences uh, all number, a whole host of different healthcare outcomes from uh, reducing maternal mortality all the way down to maybe some less predictable ones, um, which I'm happy to go to if I had more time. But I think what's most interesting to us at Bridges to Prosperity is that these rural footbridges are actually deeply helpful at the household level uh, income as well. So we found a few things when we did a three and a half year randomized control trial with uh, the University of Notre Dame and Yale. And they found that when they controlled for communities with a bridge compared to control ones without, and they studied the effects over multiple years, they found that as you might expect, household labor um, market income went up quite a bit. People could get jobs, they'd go to those jobs, whether it's day rates or whether it's on, um, outside their farm. But more surprisingly, or what we found more surprising, is that when farmers know that they can go to a market, they actually take greater risk. That means that if they have certainty that they can go to the market, they're more likely to buy more inputs, more seed, more fertilizer. They're more likely, if they have it, to plant more of their land. They're less likely to hoard additional uh, production as a fail safe to make sure if there were to be a flooding event that their family would be safe and held away from starvation. And you accumulate those things together and that increases farmer profitability by 75%. I mean, you just sit with that. I'm from Iowa, middle of the US. I can assure you if I walked down to any of my farmer friends and told them that we could increase farmer profitability by 75%, I'd have a lot of years. I think this is deeply important, not only for the household level, for community, but a national level as well. Take, for example, Rwanda. Five years ago, we started a partnership with the Ministry of Infrastructure and the R R Rwandan Transportation Development Authority to assess all of the locations in the country where people were isolated. In total, we have found that 355 high-need, high-priority sites where roughly 640,000 people currently are not able to get to where they need to go. And we've created a plan. So in the next five years, in partnership with the Ministry of Infrastructure, we are going to build all 355 of those assets, uh, totaling in the grand scheme of things a very small amount of money of $26 million. To connect 8% of the population that's currently isolated for $26 million, I'd like to impress upon you what a great investment that is. Not only because it's a, there are social aspects and there's a social uh, mission behind this, but I think if you imagine from a development economics perspective, and you take some of the data that we found in Nicaragua and you extrapolate it, you're looking at a roughly 30% increase in household level income. For folks that are living and working on a bit more than $1.50, $1.75 a day, and in communities where hundreds of households are being served by these bridges, you're getting a new economic development of over $40,000 a year on an asset that costs less than $100,000. The way that we do the maintenance and the ongoing operations of these projects in partnership with the local districts, we're seeing 30 year lifespans on these projects. So I'll let you guys do a quick NPV value on that. It's a pretty outrageous and almost doesn't make sense kind of investment. I think what's exciting for me is that not only are we thinking about how we could transform the lives of rural people, but we're starting to think about how to connect the global economy in the same way that's gonna influence and impact these rural communities at the same time. So before I leave you today, I'd like to leave you with this. Rural isolation is a crisis that we can solve in our lifetimes. And you guys in this room, let me go back, are the ones that are gonna make that possible. 
for the public sector reps in the room, this is what we do. So we work with rural emerging frontier markets and try to understand what your needs are and how we can play a role. For the private sector players, we partner already with a number of you, ranging from Bechtel to, to Balfour Beatty. Come talk with me. If you want to have a corporate social responsibility program, uh, we're looking for ways to engage this entire room. And for the balance, um, I know so many people have different passion points around their social impact journey, but we are really trying to solve a pretty big problem and think that there's a lot of folks in this room that could help move the needle, uh, because that is the power of connection. Thank you. Welcome to GII.